welcome students to Growing Grace and to using the Jupyter Ed system. This is a screen that you'll see once you log in after you have set your uh, reset your password and put all your settings in. This is what you'll see once you are ready to begin work at Growing in Grace. So you'll see any messages that you have been sent by teachers or other students will appear on your screen first. And you can always set this for the last 30 days, the last 90 days, the last year, or all messages. But the default is the last 14 days. And you can also ask it to show archived messages as well. Um, and then when you're done, you can just unclick archived messages over the, and it's the archived messages within whatever time period you're showing here. And once you've de dealt with all of your messages, you can click the to do button to see what assignments you have upcoming. These are going to be anything that um, is not past the due date, but is also not um, done yet. So if it's past the due date and you have not completed it, it will continue to show up on your to-do list. If it is upcoming and you haven't done it yet, it will show on your to-do list. And if you've completed it and you've completed it early or it still has, it's still on the window of the time frame that has been set with the teacher, then it will continue to show up as well. But if you see an assignment like this that is gray, it means you've already submitted it. So you don't really have to worry about that. What you wanna worry about are specifically the ones that say missing, do those first, because that means it is overdue. So att uh, attack the ones that are missing first. Don't have missing assignments. Do the assignments as they appear and you will stay on track. Allowing yourself to get behind will lead you to feeling overwhelmed and then you'll get even more behind because you feel frozen. So don't do that to yourself. Do your assignments, log in every day and do the assignments that are presented to you in a timely manner so that you don't get overwhelmed, okay? Um, so let's look at language arts and see what assignments we have here. So we have an expository paragraph that is due. I'm going to click that and we're going to talk about how to turn in a writing assignment. There are two ways you can turn in a writing assignment. I'm going to show you the first way and that is by using the built-in software and that is called a Juno doc. So you will scroll here to the bottom. Let me cancel this. Click the turn in button, scroll to the bottom where it says new Juno doc and click that. That's going to open up a word processing screen that will allow you to type in your paragraph. So I'm going to give it a title. Always give your paragraph a title. And this is called expository paragraph. Um, your teacher may want you to have a different title, but for the sake of this illustration, I'm just going to type in expository paragraph. And then I'm going to begin typing this is the expository, if I can spell it, paragraph that must be completed for this assignment. I hope that my teacher likes the paragraph. It is well thought out and has good sentence structure. as well as proper grammar and mechanics. Um, so let's say that's my paragraph that I typed in and I, I'm going to not turn it in just yet. Let's say I need to go for whatever reason and I can't finish it. I can click the finish later button and it will hold it for me it will say not turned in and hold it for me. If I go back out to my to-do list, I will see all of my assignments here. All my classes are listed. I can go back into this class, click on this assignment, and my expository paragraph is still there, not turned in. 
I can open it and let's say I want to add another sentence. I have enjoyed writing this paragraph. Now I'm finished. I put my concluding statement in and I'm done and I want to turn it in. So I'm going to click turn in. Now it says done. The box is checked and I'm all finished. I can go back to my to-do list. I can click on my assignments and notice there is a gray check mark next to that assignment. That assignment is turned in. That's how you know what you have to do. These little green circles mean you have not done the assignment yet, but the gray check mark means that you've completed it. So those are some little um, clues for looking at the icons on your assignments. Now, if you see a blue asterisk next to an assignment, that means that you turned it in and the teacher has graded it and you can go and look at that assignment. So I'm going to look at this assignment and I see that I got 15 out of 15. So I got an A plus. That's awesome. So if I go back to my list, let's look at that again. It was the sit set. Notice now that the blue asterisk is gone. Once you go in and you look at that assignment, you see the grade that the teacher has given you, then the blue asterisk goes away. So that is a way if those blue asterisks are bothering you, you don't know what they mean, just click on it. And when you come back out of it, the blue asterisk goes away because you've looked at it. It's just an indicator that says, hey, the teacher graded it. Go check out your grade. Go check out what you did. So those are some things that you will need to understand when you look at your list of assignments. Another thing that you want to understand about looking at this list of assignments are these little columns on the right. Now score is going to be your score. And usually that's presented in a way of um, points or a grade or a percentage. Now in this case, you see 30 out of 30. That means there were 30 possible points and you got all 30 correct. And so you made an A plus. And the, um, the impact on your grade is listed to the right. When you have done that assignment, it tells you the impact. And that's just going to give you an idea of how much um, that effort was worth. It's not important that you understand impact on grade at all, but it is important for you to see these little green and red marks here. When you see a green mark, you know that that assignment if, had a positive impact. And the bigger that green mark, the bigger the positive impact. If you see a red mark here, then that is a negative impact. That means it deducted from your score. And the bigger that red line is or that red mark is, the more it deducted from your score. And that is illustrated in the percent here. This took away 2.5%. This added 13.6%. So that's a way to help you understand which assignments maybe you need to work on or redo if your teacher will allow you to so that you can improve your grade. You know, the green ones you don't have to worry about, the red ones you need to go back and try to redo if possible. All right, so that is um, really what you need to understand. Category matches what is listed up here under year total. Uh, bonus is a 20% of your grade according to the teacher. So if you get bonus points, there's a max. The most bonus points you can get is 20%. Homework and participation, the teacher does 24%, so that's 44%. Tests and quizzes are 32%, so that is going to be, that's 56, that's 76% of your grade, and creative writing is 24% of your grade. So your teacher is actually allowing for bonus points within that 100% for this class. So you can only make 100 a max of 100 for this class. And the category just tells you where this grade falls in relationship to what where it's going to be averaged out. So if it's a test or a quiz, 
it's going to have a greater impact on your overall score because it's a bigger percentage of your overall grade. So that's just a way for you to think about where do I need to focus my best efforts in regards to my assignments. And in this case, you need to focus your best efforts on tests and quizzes. All right, so it's just a way to understand how the teacher is grading. Now, if your teacher has any files that you need to look at, there's a little icon right here that looks like a file folder. And you can click that and it will show any files. This teacher does not have any files here. Let me see if I can find a teacher that does. Go back to your to-do list. Let's look at Algebra 1. So I'm going to click the file list here. And here are file lists. Now in your math classes, in pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, and algebra three, you have a copy of the textbook that is being taught from in Jupyter. And it is broken down by lesson. So you can click on it. I'm gonna click here on lesson one through eight, and it's gonna show you a copy of the book so that you can read along, let's say the video lesson, didn't do it for you and you need to see it in writing or maybe you missed something in the video you didn't catch it you can go to your copy of the book for that lesson number and you can get exactly what the teacher has done in the video in black and white you can even print this out on your home printer if you would like to have a paper copy that way you can have a copy of the textbook without having to spend a hundred bucks on it because that is how much these books cost. So we have a, a system that allows you to have a copy without you having to spend it and without publishing and having to worry about the whole um, publishing costs. But this will allow you to say, also I want you to note, every assignment in the textbook has 30 problems. We do not make you do all 30 problems because we feel like that is busy work, but you will do 10 to 15 of them. Um, if you're having trouble, that allows us to have a pool of problems to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and work through so that you can understand what's going on and get some more practice. You're, you can also open up the book and do some of these problems on your own to make sure that you understand if you need more, you can solve through them. So you have access to all the resources that um, as if you had purchased the book yourself, right? That's part of your tuition for growing in grace. All right, so that is the book that is part of the file system. And you get there by clicking the little file folder right here for this class. Now, if you want to message the teacher, you just have to message, click the message button. And it's going to show you any messages that you got from your teacher to you. And if there aren't any, that's fine. If you want to message her, you just click new message. And it's going to automatically create a new message. So you can type in your teacher's name. I'm going to type in my name just so Miss Anna doesn't get a message that she is wondering about. Um, so now it's going to come to me from you and I'm just going to say, hi, this is a test and send it. And then that will go to your teacher. So it's just going to take you to your message center whenever you want to send a message. It's not going to automatically address it to that teacher. So click the message button, but then you have to type in their name to send it to them. All right, let's go back to our to-do list. So we were in language arts and we did an expository paragraph and we turned it in. Let me show you another way to do that. All right, so I refresh this page um, in the teacher's account so that it looks like it hasn't been done yet. So there's another way to turn in a document. Um, and that is through the creation and submission of a PDF file. PDF file is the only way that we want you to submit a document. 
Now, there are a couple of ways that you can make a PDF document. One of the ways to do that is through some type of program. And I'm going to pull up a couple different ways to do it. I'm going to pull up my pages program and I'll show you through there. But then I'm also going to pull up Google Docs. There's a way that you can do it through there. Um, and I'm going to Google. You must have a Gmail account in order to use Google Docs, but it is free. It does not cost anything. Ask if you don't have a Gmail address, tell your parents that you need to set up a Gmail account so that you can have access to typing your work in Google Docs. Now, you're going to need to use Google Docs or some type of your own software if your teacher requires that you type in MLA format or some other specific format that requires um, margins or, or formatting of a, of a specific nature. And we tend to use MLA format. And one of the cool things about Google Docs is that you can actually use, there's an add-on that you can download to your account that gives you MLA format. So I'm going to pull that up. I clicked on report MLA format, and this is a document that is already set up in MLA format. It has your name, the professor name or the teacher name, subject name, the date, and then just a illustration of how the format is supposed to look. And all you'll have to do is replace what is here with your information. That is all you need to do. And my computer is going to, let me take that off. My computer's gonna take a minute because that message popped up. So I had to go back to it. The page number is automatic. For MLA format, what we typically do is type the last name next to the page number. Let's say the professor is Anna King, and this is Algebra 1, or let's say it's um, English Language Arts. We'll leave that there, and then we'll just change this to the right year. All right, so then you would change the title of report. You see how easy it is to just highlight the information and type it in. And when you get ready to type the body, you would highlight that paragraph and type in the paragraph you want. And just continue highlighting and replacing with whatever you need to type. Notice when you go to the next page, when you add a page, this changes to its date, keeps your last name, but then it changes here. All right, so let's say that I have replaced everything, I've typed everything, I have it the way that I want it in the format that the teacher wants it to be done in. I'm gonna change the title of this document in the upper left hand corner to, I'm going to call it expository paragraph. And I'm going to put my initials on it, TR, so that when I turn this file into my teacher, she can look at the file and know whose it is, right? And you might even go as far as to say Tracy R if there's another person in your class with the same initials that'll clear anything up. So now I'm gonna say file, and I'm gonna look at my options here. First, I'm gonna make sure everything is saved. So all changes are saved, so that's good. So file, and I wanna click download, and I wanna use PDF document. So you're going to do that right there, okay? That is how you're gonna save it as a PDF document. Click PDF document, and it is going to download to your computer, to your download folder. That is the default mechanism. Let's, let me show you where it went. I'm going to click on my download folder. And my computer automatically opens it up so that I can see it. That's fine. Oh, and I think I just closed my Safari. Hold on. Let me get it back. So, yes, here it is. Um, in my download folder, the expository paragraph downloaded and it saved it as a PDF file. PDF stands for Portable Document Format, which means that anybody can open it up and read it, but they cannot edit your document. It is, 
it's like it's a photocopy of your file. They can read it, but they can't change it. They might could like drop a comment on top of it, but they cannot edit what you have submitted. So um, in order to turn that in, this is the assignment, you would click turn in. And again, you have the option for a new Juno doc, but this time we also have the option. We're going to turn it in from this computer. That's what you want to do. Click this computer and then your browser tab will open and you can go to your downloads folder where you downloaded your file, click expository paragraph or whatever the document is called, and then click this upload button and your file will be uploaded and it will be clicked done. Just like when you use the Juno doc, only this time it is an external PDF file that the teacher can still open and read um, just like your other one. So those are the two ways that you want to handle writing assignments. And I highly, highly recommend that when you have a writing assignment of any kind that allows you the opportunity to upload a copy, even if it is a paper that you are handing in in person, take that paper, save it as a PDF file and upload it to the assignment so that if something happens along the way, let's say you lost the paper before you could turn it in. Somehow it got left in another classroom. Um, you spilled something on it. It got damaged or the teacher lost it or something happened. Maybe it got left at the classroom and the teacher's at home and they don't have access to it anymore. If you upload it to your assignment, then the teacher always has a copy that they can grade and you always have a copy that you can print out. So you could actually upload this, pull it up through Jupyter. You can click open PDF and it opens it in a browser by itself. And then you can print this to a printer at school. If you lose the document, it's always good to upload it so that you have a backup copy. The teacher will have it and you will have it and you will not ever lose it. You have it for the entire year. It will stay with that assignment and then you're less likely to um, have a missing assignment or a bad grade. Right. So I highly recommend anytime you have the opportunity to upload a paper that you also have to hand in, do it just for the sake of covering any possible errors or mistakes by either you or your instructor, because life happens and, you know, accidents happen. That's just part of the way life works. So be practical and have a backup system. All right, there's another type of assignment that you might have on Jupyter, and that is called a pod. I'm going to go back to the to-do list, and I'm going to go to the Algebra 1. This, um, the other, well, actually, um, any one of your subjects could have a writing assignment. Any one of your subjects could have a Junopod. But math typically uses Junopods. So I'm going to go to Algebra 1. And we're going to go to this assignment here. It's one that I made um, for this, and it has a variety of questions. I just wanted you to see all the different options that there were. So I'm going to, um, I think this is the right one. Yes. So this is a multiple choice problem. Let me go back. Let me click done. Let's do save for later. All right, so I'm going to click on the assignment and this is the instruction page. And in order to open the assignment, you click the word open, right? So it takes you right to whatever the first thing it wants you to see is. Now, sometimes you're going to have a video lesson here and you're going to watch the video and you're going to take notes. Then that will be followed by a pod. Sometimes you won't have a video, especially if you have a textbook like history where you need to fill in the blank. It's asking you questions and you have to answer the questions or whatever. 
These are the different types of questions that you will have that you will see in a Juno pod. So this one says, which is an even number? This is multiple choice. So you just click on the even number and it's not exactly visible um, to a great degree. You can see this is just the number is darkened and these numbers are grayed out and this is a check mark. All right, so you don't necessarily have, it's like a different color. It doesn't stand out a lot, but it does stand out enough for you to tell. This is called a multiple answer question. And it says, which are odd numbers? And with a multiple answer, you can select more than one answer. It's like multiple choice, but more than one multiple choice. So one is an odd number. If I can select that. Three is an odd number and five is an odd number. And I'm going to click the check mark and have it check my answers and they're all correct. So the check mark at the bottom, when you see the check mark at the bottom of your screen, it means that it will tell you whether or not you got it right. And it will not show up until after you have finished answering all the possible questions on that page. Three is an even number, true or false. The whole statement is true or some of the statement is false. Three is a number, but it's not an even number. So this is false. And because it, the type of problem it is, it automatically advanced. So watch for the problems that are multiple choice or true and false to automatically advance. Um, be aware. I've had, I have had students mark the wrong thing because they were not aware that it had advanced to the next page. Okay, so take your time and pay attention. Match the word to its symbol. So I'm just going to drag these little slider bars here. That allows me to drag one answer to match another. This should go with two. This should go with five. This should go with four. So two, four, one, five, three. Yes, the words match the symbol. I'm going to check my answer and they are all correct. So I'm going to go to the next. It automatically advanced to the next problem. So now it says put these numbers in order. So one goes first, then two, then three, then four, then five. I'm going to check my work and it says they're correct. And I'm going to go to the next answer so, or the next problem. That says write the first five natural numbers in order. Let me go back to this was a matching problem, obviously. This was a sorting problem where you had to move them around and sort them in the right order. This is called a fill in the blank problem. This is where you actually type your answer. So write the first five natural numbers in order. Natural numbers begin at the number one. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And we're going to check that those are correct. And then we have to manually advance to the next problem. This is called a short answer field. It allows more space to type in a problem or to type in a response. These keys below your fields allow you like we had them over here. Anything where you have to type in these keys will show up if your teacher has assigned them to the Juno pod. So one plus two is three. I don't need any of these special keys for that, right? So I'm going to check that. It's correct. I'm going to advance to the next problem. This is called a long answer. What is your favorite number and why? All right. So my favorite number is I want to say that my favorite number is half one over two and I was able to make that fraction by clicking the fraction button. So that is why you have all of these special keys here is so you can type in any type of number. So let's say I have more than one favorite number. I'm going to type in and three squared. That's the exponent key and the square root of four. So you can see that you have a variety of options whenever you need to type in a number. And then I'm going to type in and 
5 pi. So this is the symbol we use for pi. Most of our schoolwork, most of our math work in algebra, you will not use 3.14. You will use the pi symbol and leave it. Your teacher will expand on that more in class, but that is why we have this symbol available so you can use it and not have to multiply it. So leave 5 pi as the answer there. My favorite number is 1 half and 3 squared and the square root of 4 and 5 pi because I think they are cute. It doesn't, it's, you know, when they say and why for math, you know, on a question like this, it's whatever you think, um, unless it has a specific answer. So that is what we call a long answer. It will allow you to type sentences, um, more than a, more than a few, maybe even paragraphs, but not more than just, you know, a paragraph at most in these long answer fields. The next type of problem that you're going to have is a number line problem. So this is going to let your mouse, you see when it changes, your cursor becomes a plus sign and it, that means that you can draw on the number line. So this is graph on the number line, x is equal to 2. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get right on this number 2 and I'm going to make one little click. I'm just going to tap it one time. That is how you would graph x is equal to 2 on the number line. The next type of problem you're likely to see is a coordinate system. Now this coordinate system, this is like your graphing paper and the little bars, the little spaces are numbered for you so you don't have to guess. And this is to graph the point 2, 3 on the system below. So x is the first and y is the second. This is x, this is y. So I'm going to find 2 and I'm going to go up to 3, up to 3. And that's how you'd graph a point on a coordinate system. So you're just drawing. And sometimes you're going to be asked to draw a line on these. You can draw a line. You can see how that how easy that is. Um, as long as you draw it in the right place, in the right angle, the right direction, and you'll learn about how to do that in your pre-algebra, algebra one and algebra two classes. If you need help or practice with these types of problems, getting the hang of how to draw them, just go to your teacher and ask her to sit down with you and show you how to do it. But it's, it's relatively simple. You're just drawing with your cursor. You have to hold down the button and then you can draw and you can draw quite a bit actually let's say i drew that or my sister came along and she sat down and she drew on my homework and now i don't want to turn that into my teacher you can click the undo button and it will take away the last thing that you did then it will take away the next thing that you did and the next thing you did and the next thing you did and then so It'll go backwards from the last thing you did, removing things to click the undo button. If you click redo, it will put it back. Let's say you decided that that was correct and you don't have to redraw it. Redo puts it back. Undo takes it away. Or you can click this little X here and click right on top of it with the pointer and it will erase it. And that is how you use the drawing options on your number line and your graphing system. Now those are all the different types of problems that you might see in a Junopod. If you have any questions about how to do them, please contact your instructor. She is going to be more than happy to explain it to you and give you a little bit of one-on-one -on -one if needed. Now at the beginning of all of the math courses, there is an introductory Junopod that teaches you how to use the special characters. It's not difficult. Um, you're going to learn how to type in scientific notation, how to type in fractions and radicals, how to type in unit of measures, how to use exponents. All of that will be covered in an introductory assignment, which is basically a freebie A if you follow along and do what it it tells you it tells you step by step what buttons to type and which keys to press so that you can know how to use the special characters that were in some of these previous problems.
And all you have to do when you are done with the Genopod, you're confident of your answers. Let's say you want to make sure you put everything in correctly. These little arrows at the bottom allow you to cycle through. So you can actually click through and double check your answers all the way through. I'm going to go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so I've looked at all of my answers. I'm going to look one more time and go back to the end just to make sure everything is answered the way I want it to be answered. Oh, wait, I didn't answer that problem. Let me go back to it. That last problem, I didn't actually answer it. So let me put that point back where it goes. So now I'm done. So all you do is click done. And it's going to ask you the same thing that a Junopod or a Juno doc will ask you. It's going to ask you, do you want to cancel and keep working on it? Do you want to save it for later? Or are you ready to grade it now, to turn it in now? Um, this is your done. The rest will be graded later. That just means that if you have anything that requires manual grading, like your drawing or your long text, if you have a long answer problem, a number line or a graphing problem, it will have to be manually graded by the teacher. So I'm going to click turn in now. And I'm going to go back to that lesson and I'm going to view it to see what I did. And all it's going to tell me is what I've done right. It's going to show me my check mark. A lesson will tell you that you got it right. A, um, a test will not. So those are the differences between the two. Now notice I've opened this back up and there's another little word up here that says re do. In some of your classes, your teachers will allow you to go back and redo assignments as you need to, to master. So you can always ask your teacher or your teacher will typically tell you at the beginning of the year, um, whether or not they do that or they allow that. The easiest way to find out is just to reopen the assignment. And when you reopen the assignment and you see this little word redo, then you know, oh, I can redo this. So if you have a low score on something and you want a second chance, first open the assignment and look for this little word, this little button. And if it's available, you can go ahead and redo it without having to bother the teacher or get her to turn something else on for you. Um, and you can, it's a self, um, it's unassisted. You can do it yourself without having to contact somebody and uh, wait for them to respond. So it's an immediate help for you. So you can click the redo button and it's going to ask you, erase your answers to start over or unlock to continue. You never, ever, ever want to click erase. What you want to do is always click unlock because what happens when you click erase, even your correct answers get removed. When you click unlock, only your incorrect answers are removed. Any answers that are correct remain. So if I click unlock, it's going to load it for me and it's going to keep all of the answers that I got that I got correct. So I can just scroll through and I don't have to redo those problems at all. They're all done. Okay, so I finished that. I'm going to turn it in. This is what it looks like when you erase. When I click this, I view it. If I click redo and I click erase, it starts over. And I have to redo every single problem that is in the entire Genopod. None of my correct answers remain. I have to start all over with every answer. So when you redo, click unlock, right? always click unlock when you want to redo. Um, I'm going to click done. I'm going to click finish later because this is not finished. And notice when I click finish later, the green dot remains. It did not give me the gray check mark. It gave me the green dot so that I know I haven't finished it yet. So that's something that you need to look at when your um, assignment list if you have green dots, then you have assignments that you have not done. 
If you see an assignment that has a grade check mark, but it is missing, it just means the teacher hasn't graded it yet. Do not bug the teacher and say, hey, you haven't mis- graded it yet. They know they haven't graded it yet. They will get to it. It is a process of grading all of the papers in all of the classes. And typically they have an order. Typically teachers grade as they're turned in on a first come first serve basis. So there are people in front of you, they'll grade those papers in the order that they came in and then they will eventually get to your paper. So be patient and be kind and give your teacher a grace period. If a week to two weeks later, it's still not graded, then say something to your teacher. But give her some time to get through all the papers that must be graded, all the Juno pods that must be graded, all the writing assignments that must be read and graded. There's a lot of work that's done behind the scenes so that you can have your work graded. Um, so give us some grace as we give you some grace in, you know, sometimes you guys turn in assignments late and we've already graded everybody else's work. So just saying, um, take that into consideration and be um, aware that they have more than just your work to grade. They have other students in your class and other students in other classes that have to happen as well. So please be patient with us. We are moving as fast as we can. Okay. That is all that we have for how to do assignments in your, um, in your classes and you've seen how to find a copy of any files that your teacher might have um, by looking in the file folder. Uh, Miss Mona has nothing in that one. Let's see if chemistry has any files. Yes, she has some files here. She has a forum. A forum is where you are required to participate in a discussion board where you have to comment. And sometimes teachers use this as a way to get some extra time with you and extra explanation. They can post videos there. They can post uh, follow-ups to the classroom discussion so that you get all the information. You don't miss anything. And it's a great way for students who are not in class on a particular day to go and check and see if they missed anything that's important for that class. So if your has a t- if your teacher has a forum that she uses on a regular basis, please go check that. And then let's go back and see. I do believe personal finance has files. Yes, they have the entire book is out there in personal finance so that you can open it and look at all of that. Um, and that is how you use the system to do assignments as a Juno doc, as a Juno pod, and as a PDF file submission. Please remember that the only files that we accept are PDF documents. We do not like to see pictures because pictures are hard to read. There are an abundance of apps that you can put on your phone that will allow you to take a picture of a page and it will turn it into a PDF document and save it for you on your phone. And then you can upload it directly from your phone to the Jupyter app that you can put on your phone. So do not think that just because you're doing it on your phone that you can't also upload a Juno, uh, not a Juno doc, a, a PDF. You can do that. And that is um, something that we can teach you in person if you need to understand how that works. So again, um, GenoPods, a variety of questions available in GenoPods. GenoDocs is where you can type something in. And uploading a PDF file is a great way for you to have a copy of your work where it won't be lost and where it can be easily retrieved by either you or the teacher. And that is all I have for you. I hope this didn't take up too much of your time. It is important for you to understand how the system works so that you can be 
an effective user and get the most out of the system and get your best work done and get your best grade. But you don't want to get a bad grade just because you don't know how to use the system. And that's why we made this video for your benefit as a student. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.